Johnny Quest Gaming, y'all. He about to express his review on the awesome animated series Invincible, which, of course, as I said, dropped three episodes last night. The first three episodes of the series dropped last night, and they'll be dropping an episode every week until April 30th. So next week, they're going to be dropping episode four, five. Five is dropping on Johnny Quest Gaming's birthday, April the 9th. Then six, seven, and eight, concluding on April the 30th, the eight episode season with basically one hour episodes. It's basically like 16 regular cartoons, but it's eight one hour episodes. Um, Johnny Quest Gaming, tell the folks what you thought about, you know what I'm saying, events, boy. I mean, it, it was great to see the show in motion. I mean, like, it's one thing to see it in the comic, and Brian Otley does a great way of demonstrating the characters and the action because Invincible is just a, a grindhouse version of a comic book uh, presentation. I mean, when I say grindhouse, if you're familiar with anything grindhouse, it is an over-the-top, very violent, gory movie series, and they tell their stories with the use of excessive violence and gore. Um, but well, it's not Invincible, all gore. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Yeah, but Invisible has always been Superman meets Spider-Man as far as the storytelling because it's always been a coming-of-age story with that grindhouse element, and it made it a very unique and interesting story. Um, however, seeing it in the comics was always... You could see those great shots where... He just put the emphasis through and kind of gave you that visualization of what was going on and how powerful these characters are and, you know, just the action. But to see it in motion, you know, that translated well because I've seen comic books and it didn't translate as well whenever you try to put it into motion. It just didn't have that same bang, but this actually exceeded any expectation of what the comic book action was versus real life. I mean, they they have done something. I mean, it might be because of the way the technology has come as far as animation goes, but Invincible is ter telling a very amazing story with some just amazing animation. I mean, it's very Spider-Man-esque, very cin cinematic. Um, they're hitting the characters. They just It's just doing a great job. I mean, it's, I was seriously impressed. All three episodes were, like, amazing. Like, not not one of the episodes were lackluster. It hit the point, and it made, it gave true homage to the comic book. Like, it gave 100% respect. I mean, that's what happened when you got the creator behind it, and the creator is basically him in this joint, joint, because, you. I mean... This is Invincible is a creator owned comic book. As I mentioned, Robert Kirkman, the same guy who created The Walking Dead, this is his baby as well. I, I mean, both The Walking Dead and Invincible, both of those comic books came out the very same year. Invincible coming out in January of 2003. The Walking Dead came out in October of that same year. Of course, everybody know The Walking Dead from its over decade run as a, um, as a show on AMC. And now Invincible, you know, is getting its shine after, you know, concluding its 15 year run in 2018 from 2003 to 2018. Now here we are 2021 getting an um, animated adaptation of the series. And so far, three episodes in is it is hitting, you know, saying shout outs to Robert Kirkman, shout outs to Corey Walker, who is the co-creator of Invincible, who um, did um, did um, the um artwork and uh, some issues as well but ryan notley is the one who set set the bar set the tone for how the series progressed because he did 125 i believe 125 of the 144 issues of invincible so you know he did a lot of those books you know and he really set the tone for how the the book you know really you know leveled up over the years and especially the colorist, you know, from uh, Bill Crabtree, who gave that really poppy, um, that poppy, you know, bright colors to the book, you know, in the first 50 issues. Um, FCO, who really changed changed the game up with his vibrant colors, and they kept on getting more and more and more vibrant afterwards. From John Roch 
to um, John Rock to um, I can't remember the sorry I can't remember the name of the last color as well, but I know he had like a French name um, John I can't remember I'm sorry I can't remember his name right now but you know from those guys and the letterers and you know everybody who just really made that book you know pop and I'm glad we're getting a chance to see just 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 a bit of it right now because we ain't even got to the whole thing baby we we hey, we just getting a little bit right now Man, we got a long way to go. Long, long, long way to go. I mean, so, I'm very. I mean, but the Omni Man <clears throat> fight, the Omni Man fight was super intense to see it actually go down. It's right. one thing to see the little quick shots or the steals, but it went down. Right. Hey, it 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 it, it, it was not no, it it was not no. Oh, we about to kill over, goddamn. Hey, it was. <laughs> Nah, bro, that was intense. Right. I was like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen him crush heads a million times in that book over, but the intensity of what happened, the slowness in the eyeball, I was like, oh, wow. Then then the punches that he received and it showed him getting bruised, I was like, oh, y'all is going hard. Y'all is going hard, bro, because the bruises start coming afterwards. Right. So you could see how it was working it was getting through the flesh it was going through it was intense bro now and the sad part is in retrospect when you look at that emotion mm. they if they had a hell on a little bit longer they could have killed him oh yeah they, they i mean they 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 well you know it, it was so crazy because it was so surprising because i mean at the end of the day because what darkwing he's just a regular dude darkwing was just a regular dude um, him and um, Green Ghost, which which um, you know, uh, didn't get a chance uh, to go into as far as like um, I mean like I'm not I'm not I'm not worried about any different as far as changes you know for genders or race or anything like that because it's all it all meshes well you know what I'm saying yeah. in 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 a perspective because you know it's I mean I mean hey Kurtman Kurtman he can change up how he want to because you know this is this is his baby you know what I'm saying I mean it's, I mean of course. You know, we we, we griped about you know spawn the spawn changes in that quote unquote movie back in '97, but that's a need to hear that. That uh, but anyway, but uh, but this right here, everything was just freaking dope. And of course, you know, we had to see. Hey, we had to get Monster Girl in in, in these first three episodes because Monster Girl that, that Monster Girl was it, it is tough. And yo, I I just can't wait to see the progression of all of this. Everybody. Of course, I mean you. You got top tier people voicing on this series. Stephen Young, uh, Stephen Young, he has definitely catapulted his way over the over the past decade from being the live action version of Glenn on The Walking Dead to his other voice work, starting with being Avatar One in The Legend of Korra to being Keith in Voltron Legendary Defender, and now here he is as Invincible. Mark Grayson is freaking awesome you know what i'm saying like i i wouldn't have even saw the scope yeah, the great of great part is glenn could actually play him if he wanted to yeah yeah he he, he, <laughs> he, he i mean he really could i mean he really could because uh why not if they did a live action he could definitely play him without without a without a doubt but so not only was the vegetable great of course we had falcon and winter soldier right Falcon and Winter Soldier is like telling a story like when you get one of those really amazing writers on a stint of a comic and you're like dang the artwork ain't even that great but the story is so good and you know with this of course it's people so it's naturally gonna look great but the story is so good and I'm and I'm really happy that they're not afraid to go there with this story. You know right. I mean? And 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 they yeah. and, and going there they are, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to the whole scope of things because I mean, just in case y'all didn't know, I mean, I don't know. Just in case y'all didn't know, um Falcon a black dude. Falcon is a black man. Yeah. He's a black man. And they're showing how he's going to just because he's a black hero doesn't mean that he escapes the world that we in. He's not in no fictional world where it's like, oh, we love black people and there's flowers and we're dancing around and this and that. No, at the end of the day, he still fits the description of 
anybody. When people in this world is so hardly going against me. And I think that is something that is the real realization that when people look at stuff and you see, oh, they like people who look at athletes. Oh, I love Michael Jordan. I love Bo Jackson. I love Mike Vick. This, that, and the third. But you love them. But do you really understand the type of struggles they're going on outside of their field, outside of you seeing them on the court? If you've seen them in public and you didn't know who they were, would you naturally treat them the way that you have that same admiration when you see them put on that uniform and go out there and do your favorite sports? Like, like, you, like, you know, like, 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 oh, I, oh, I real, oh, I didn't know it was him outside the wings. Like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> so, so did his heart change any? Did his integrity change any? Did the actions that you perceived him of doing before change because of his stature? That's the problem with America. That's the problem with the world. We live by such double standards. We live by such double standards. We live in the fact that it's okay to like a person in one instance, but it's okay to dislike him in another. And at the end of the day, there is no such thing as race. We are the human race. We are humans. Nowhere in anything does it tell you that you are different. Because at the end of the day, if some entity came down to this planet and you'd be like, oh, no, I'm black. They're going to be like, they're going to analyze you and they're going to be like, human. Yeah, <laughs> you are darker skinned. But at the end, you're a human. No, I'm white. Don't kill me. Or I'm Indian. Don't kill me. They're going to analyze you and they're going to say, well, let's see. You have the same heart. You have the same liver. You have man. the same long. It looks to me that you're the same person. So right. why should I have any discrepancy of you versus anybody else? Yeah, hey, they're going to be like, hey, you're a human. You're an earthling. You know, it's, it's, it's a wrap for you. You know, we're here to kill all right. earthlings. You know. At the end of the day, until you bleed a different colored blood or have a different system. And then the thing is so crazy about people, we describe other things as being humanoid because they have human tendencies, but we separate the very people that have the exact same build up us as us as different races. Right. No. No, no, it's called adaptation to certain surroundings. That you don't part. go and look at frogs and be like, Oh, that's a different race of frog. <laughs> You classify them all as frogs. It's a tree frog, a freaking little small baby frog. Just because they've taken on adaptations to their environment, then you still classify them as the same thing. You still put them in the same kingdom. But the only kingdom that y'all should, that you say every single day that you worship is the kingdom of God, but let you separate your people out of that. So I'm gonna leave y'all with that little bit of nugget for today, but in closing, I'm just going to say I like the story. I think a smart man who understands anything about comics and I think right now, Favoro and Faye, he definitely understand comics is that you can only combat one comic book style. If one has all these amazing superpower characters, then the next thing you should combat it with is amazing story and something's going to draw the people in and that's what they're doing with Falcon and Winter Soldier. So, right. and church, the tabernacle on that. And another thing, another thing, another thing that I just wanted to uh, uh, iterate as far as our Falcon Winter Soldier. Isaiah Bradley. I love the way that they introduced his character in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> See, that's a lot of people don't know about that right there. They don't know about the, the black Captain America. Right. They don't, they, don't, they don't know about there's a black Captain America going through actually he laid more hands than Cap because Cap was in the deep freeze mm -hmm. so they got your man Isaiah Bradley to go out there and do his thing and he was he first of all he wasn't like Cap he was already very athletic and was out there doing his thing so when they was already he was a top soldier so when they put him into the program it's like dang you don't had Superman now take super soldier serum so now it's like dang he right. has to change so yeah that's a little moment of black history that y'all got to find out about that uh yes there was a black captain america and yes he was doing his thing harder than cap and i give you know you know how i feel about cap mm -hmm. it's cap and man, cap, cap, cap the man cap the man you know what i'm saying he, he did a 30 year stretch you got name 
You know what I'm saying? For what? Exactly. That's what I got to figure out. For what? Most, 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 me. most likely for nothing. And the thing, and the thing, and the, and, and, and experimentation, of course. And and you know the the funny thing is, you know the funny thing is, is the 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 funny thing about that is the fact that he actually did it because obviously the man could have got out if he wanted to get out. Yeah, he was, bro. He, he, he. If he is. You see what you see what he did now as an old old man. So if he wanted to get out, he right. would have got out. But my thing is, if you could keep, if you think Steve Rogers, if Steve, you couldn't keep Steve Rogers. You damn sure couldn't keep this dude. Right. <laughs> at that time, Bucky's arm was still made out of adamantium. At that time, mm-hmm. whenever he fought him as Winter Soldier, he told him he took half of it off. Mm-hmm. Who you know tear apart adamantium? Right. Who? <laughs> and vibranium and adamantium arm that he has now, mm-hmm. you ain't gonna break that. That's impossible. Mm-mm. Give praise to Wakanda for that. Mm-hmm. But that's a whole nother story. We ain't gonna get into Wakanda technology because that'll blow y'all mind. That, see, y'all, y'all see the little Black Panther movie. And y'all be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Black Panther's cool. No, no, sons, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Black Panther has been on the top level over Batman for years, son. That part. Years. That part. Years. That part. And I give all all respect to Chadwick Boseman. God, when he may he rest in power, but the black mantle, the Black Panther mantle. The black Panther needs to continue, baby. Black Panther needs to continue. Simple as that. It, it is a story. That real, continues. real, real comic one book fans know that. Empire. I mean, you think you think you. Comic book world. You 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 don't come to Wakanda in the comic book world. You don't. It's some places you don't go. Dark side's home world. You ain't gonna land foot on that and just be like, okay, it's cool. We're gonna do whatever. No, you're not gonna do that. Nope. And Wakanda. You're not going into Wakanda. Nope. I don't know what y'all... What they showed in the movie was cool. That was that was all right. That was whatever. But no, not, not the real Wakanda. That's, they know when to land it in Wakanda, first of all. Mm-hmm. Them soldiers, they wouldn't have been up there saying... Putting the symbol and running into battle, hell no, because their technology they would have never gotten there. Black Panther literally would have shot a beam and sent him to a whole other dimension. Or if he wanted to, they would have moved Wakanda to a separate pocket dimension until that was over. You just don't mess with Wakanda. Wakanda is way more than what you see in the movies. Like they, that's a downplay of Wakanda. That's one third of what Wakanda. Wakanda was probably doing that what they got right now. <laughs> around uh, BC time to right. be honest because that's how advanced Wakanda really is Wakanda has dealt with aliens and interdimensional beings and time travel and the most advanced weaponry in the universe I've seen where other aliens have come to Wakanda for questioning that whole thing about aliens existing that wouldn't have been a surprise to Wakanda mm. the Infinity Gems that wouldn't have been a surprise to Wakanda they like oh Infinity yeah. Gems that's cool that's whatever that's cute we'll right. uh show you how you can destroy Infinity Gem. That's how serious, really, Black Panther is. And really, Black Panther in the comic, he, his purpose, he doesn't care about the outside world, which is kind of messed up with all the things that's happened through history, but that's just what it is. Wakanda is separated, but they're separated. Black Panther is just a defender, so he just go out and be like, you know what, stop before you really get in here. You know, he like a doorman, because whenever he right. stop you, Okay, that's on you if you go past Black Panther, because when you get to Wakanda, it ain't going to be what you think it is. They're going to obliterate you. Like, right. it, it's no game. He, he, like, he, he's basically the warning. <laughs> right. He, he's the warning. And with that being said, y'all, with that being said, appreciate y'all for checking out this review on Invincible and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know what I'm saying? From Johnny Quest Gaming to myself, it's your man Slim Jim Longfoot, aka the GOAT. Make sure y'all check out all the awesome stuff that we got here on the ch- on the channel. From Johnny Quest Gaming channel to my channel, everything that I do. And in the meantime, between time, stay blessed up, y'all. Peace. No doubt. Peace out. Tell them no waste my time. Tell them no waste my time. Oh yeah. Tell them no waste my time.